Um, and for over a year, we've been praying and discussing as a pastoral leadership team where God wants to take us over the next 10 years. Uh, we have just now, what we have just now, I, sh I was contemplating putting my glasses on for the first time, but I put 16 fonts, so we'll see if we can do, do it without them, but they may have to come out <laughs> if I make too many uh, bloopers. But what we have just now is good. Can you hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Okay, what we have just now is good, but we sense that God has the best in store for us, and we do not want the good to become the enemy of the best. We want the best that God has for us and all that God has for us. And we know for some time that we've needed some breakthrough, um, and we've been praying and discussing about that breakthrough that we have needed. And today we want to share with you what we believe that breakthrough is. We believe we've been praying for a breakthrough, and we believe God has revealed and is bringing us and leading us into that breakthrough. But when I preached last on 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7, it was love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And I mentioned Proverbs 3, verse 5, when I spoke, which says, trust in the Lord completely. Okay, so as we enter into the vision, let's remember to trust, not a man, but in the Lord completely, and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on Him to guide you, and He will lead you in every decision you make. And that's what Lindsay and I have been doing. That's what our pastoral leadership team have been doing for some time now. We've been praying We've been relying on Him to guide us and to lead us in every decision that we make. And we believe that this journey of trust and obedience has led us to what we're about to announce today. We trust Him completely because love always trusts. We've relied on Him to guide us, and He has. Uh, we believe He plans to prosper us. Amen? He plans to give us a hope. Can I hear an amen? and a future, and that it's that hope and future that we want to announce today. But last night I was traveling home from the pharmacy in Perth and I had a flat tire on a single track road en route to Benarty Hill to clear the heat after a busy day. And I didn't have a wrench, so I had to text the RAC, but within five minutes, a man in his 70s called Lynn, L-Y-N-N-E, yes, it's Lynn, he told me, um, in his 70s, he stopped by and I got a wrench. I got the spare wheel back on uh, the car. I drove to the start of Benarty Hill for a beautiful climb on the evening sunshine to clear my head. And I asked God, that's rather unusual to have a man called Lynn in his 70s. Is there anything that you want to speak to me through that God? And I, I felt him say, look what Lynn means. And the Anglo-Saxon meaning was a cascade. That's it. Thank you, Clara. A cascade. In Irish Gaelic, it means a house, church. And then I looked up cascade, and this is what it means. A waterfall or series of small waterfalls over steep rocks. God knows I love waterfalls um, and rocks and a heavy, uncontrolled outpouring. And um, I felt God say, when you're stuck, your tire is burst, I will send a Lynn. Within five minutes, it was quick. I'll send a cascade to get you back on the road. And I believe that it was a prophetic image, a prophetic moment of what God is going to do with us as a church. When stuck, when burst, when not moving, He's going to send a lin, a cascade, a heavy, uncontrolled outpouring of His Holy Spirit to us, will give it, which will give us what we are missing to get us moving towards that bright hope and future. And that lin, that cascade, uh, will get us moving again. Just next slide, please. That's it. It will get us moving again towards the mountain of the Lord, so that we can ascend 
the hill of the Lord. We can ascend the beauty and glorious mountain of the Lord into his presence that the King of glory may come in. The King of glory may enter in. And that was last night up Benarty Hill. You've never been up it and you want to be shown, I'm your man. Um, he's going to send a heavy, uncontrolled outpouring of his spirit on us. He's going to send us a waterfall cascading, a waterfall of love, a waterfall of his spirit to get us moving in the right direction that the king of glory may come in. And in that moment, in a, sorry, in a little moment, we're going to show a video about some changes that are going to be happening in the coming weeks and months. And Lindsay and I have been pastoring this church uh, on one day per week for some time now. And we came to the realization that that's not practical. And it needs to change for us as a family, for us as a church family, so that we can get the best for everyone. And Lindsay and I have been praying and discussing together uh, and with my dad, with the pastoral leadership team for a long time about laying down that role of senior pastors and finding new senior pastors to take on the church. This was in consultation with uh, a very experienced pastor called Nick Harden that we've been in relationship with a long time and I spent 24 hours processing, praying, talking and discussing um, to get some clarity about the breakthrough and the way forward for us as pastors and, a church, and as a church. And that meeting was pivotal and it got the ball rolling. And when I came back from Liverpool, we started praying and discussing as a pastoral leadership team and believing that we had heard from God and we acted. We believed we heard from God. Now, in my lecture devotional this week, the reading was about the feeding of the 5,000. And don't worry, we're going to get to the video, but we put it in some context. The reading from my lectio devotional said that Andrew, talking about the feeding of the 5,000, Andrew pointed out very sensibly that a single lunch was not enough to feed a vast crowd. But Jesus ignored his argument and instructed him to get everyone sitting down to eat. It is action, not speculation, that makes way for the miracle. And what a miracle. There was more than enough. No one went home hungry and nothing was lost. And it finished with this yielding prayer, which I pray over us today. It says, even when things look impossible from a human perspective, with Jesus, anything is possible. I hear John saying a big amen there, a big lock, Kelly, amen. Acknowledging my past disappointments, yes, there's been a few, and surrendering, surrendering my ever-present skepticism, I yield my heart to the possibility of miracles. And God brought one to us this morning who prayed on this stage. Yeah? So we yield our hearts to the possibility of miracles, of abundant provision, mercy, and fresh hope. And John, you're a living testimony of that, brother. And it's action, not speculation, that way it makes way for miracles. And that's how we felt. We felt hearing God's voice and obeying was the action needed to see a miracle. And the same was true for Jesus' first miracle. Now, Jesus' first miracle happened at a wedding where he turned water to wine. The servants were told, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. It was action not speculation that made way for the miracle of water to wine at a wedding. The first miracle, water to wine, was at a wedding. And um, we're looking forward to a wedding. Leah and Alistair, come on, give, them up, give it up for Alistair and Leah. I can't wait for this wedding, guys. <laughs> Nothing more beautiful and joyful than a wedding. That's where Jesus chose to do his first miracle. And we want to tell you about another wedding 
today. We felt that we had to hear from God, we had to listen and obey and not speculate to see a miracle. So let's watch this video, then we're going to get our team to come back up and tell you a little bit more. So let's just uh, sit back, let's just watch this video and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Hi, for those of you who don't know us, we'd love to introduce ourselves. I'm Steve, this is Hannah, and we are the senior pastors of Grace City Church in Dunfermline. And we want to give you an opportunity to hear a proposal that's come our way uh, for the greater mission of Dunfermline, and it's really exciting. Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Aaron, and we're the pastors at the Vine Church. We have known Steve and Hannah for more than a decade, and it was back in 2012 when we first met in the Glen. Uh, that was a special day, and I was down the Glen with uh, our children, and I walked up to the other part of the park, and immediately I saw these people who were smiling and happy and they were glowing and I knew there was something special about these people. And we've grown to respect one another's families and churches and ministries. And over the years we've grown our friendship and we've been ministering and serving alongside one another in the city of Dunfermline. Well, we met Aaron in the park in 2012 and what was amazing was uh, we had so many connections. Even in 2005, I brought a bunch of young people from England up to Scotland to a music festival, a Christian worship event uh, that was hosted and ran by The Vine. And at that event, Martin Smith prophesied over Scotland, Martin Smith and the band Delirious. And he said that the, the sound coming up from Scotland, this roar, their enthusiasm, their wild hearts would, would stir an awakening for Scotland and, and revival in this place. And I felt such a, uh, like a drawing to it. I was like, God, I, in this moment, I feel like you're calling me to Scotland, even way back then. And so to meet Aaron in the park and for him to say, oh yeah, we're the Vine Church. We ran Frenzy, that's us. It was incredible. And um, I went home and, and Hannah even uh, found in her journal, she'd written from 2005, that prophecy down from Martin Smith that we're gonna be part of this. And over the years, we've had so many divine connections with Aaron and Lindsay and the Vine, haven't we? And um, it's, it's been a special relationship um, as, we've, as we've progressed and lived here. Mm. I can just see that God is so into the details from the call of God on our lives personally and as churches and just even the crossover just slowly building over the last 10 years. Yeah. So many core guys from our church and from the Vine Church have supported one another, have done partnership stuff for, for, for the kingdom together, have used each other's equipment, have been trustees for each other. It's just been a really lovely um, um, journey, yeah. uh, not even realising it, of how we've supported one another as churches to get yeah. to this point. Yeah, there's been so many kingdom relationships mm. and we're about to share with you um, how these kingdom relationships we feel are coming together and we're really excited. So we're going to hand over to Aaron and Lindsay who are going to tell you more. So back in February, we invited Steve and Hannah to join us for a curry. And they came expecting some good food. And that's what they got, because they do enjoy cooking a good curry. Or well, so they said, it wasn't too hot. However, we had more than a curry. We had a proposal for them, which I think was quite surprising initially. We proposed to them that we consider and pray about bringing together, marrying together two churches, uh, Grace City Church Dunfermline and Vine Church Dunfermline. We did pray and consider merging and marrying our churches together to become a stronger, better, healthier congregation better equipped to reach the harvest. We believe there's a bumper harvest in their family. Jesus said the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. And we prayed about coming together that we would have more laborers better equipped to reach the harvest, like two boats coming together. There's a large catch, but we needed two boats to come together to be able to take care of the fish, take care of the flock. So we had three proposals that we asked Stephen and Hannah to consider. Number one, would they consider joining, marrying the two churches together to form one new church? Would, number two, would Steve and Hannah consider being the senior pastors of this new church? Because Lindsay and I felt our time had come to find new senior pastors. And thirdly, would this new, new church come under Elam. We love what Elam stands for. We love their strength, their resilience, and all the benefits of joining. So we asked them to consider, could this new church come under Elam? We appreciate this is a lot to take in, and this isn't something that we considered lightly. 
um, but we'd love to tell you how we arrived at this point in our journey and it was almost a 12 month process uh, before the vine even approached us. So Aaron's just gonna share a little bit about that now. Back um, early 2023, spring leading up to the summer, we've been discussing with the elders for a long time that uh, something needed to change. As you know, I've been trying to lead the church on one day per week and we feel that something needed to change, that we needed to uh, start looking for new senior pastors to oversee the Vine Church in Dunfermline. And so my wife, good lady, encouraged me, always, always listen to your wife, to go down and speak to someone called Nick Harden, who is a longtime friend, someone we highly respect and highly value. And I spent a good couple of days with him discussing uh, where we're at, where we've got to, what our burning hearts and desires and passion is, and where can we go from here. And I remember Nick asking me, is there a, um, a church in the city of Dunfermline that has a similar DNA to your own um, that you could consider merging with? Because that is one option for seeing great, um, uh, uh, great improvement and seeing great benefit and growth for the churches. And I said, well, there's only really one church that I could consider um, that we could do that with. And it sprang to mind straight away, really easily. I thought of Grace City Church Dunferm and I thought of Steve and Hannah and because of our long-term friendship, because of relationship with them, because we knew that our DNA was similar, our heart was similar, our vision was similar, our culture was similar, uh, we, our personalities, um, and uh, just so many things, that uh, strengths that sprang to mind when I think of Grace City Church. And then, um, this led to us, you know, starting to discuss the mission. What is our mission and vision? And we realized that our mission and vision uh, is, is very similar to that of Grace City Church in Dunfermline. Our desire to see our city reached with the good news of Jesus Christ for disciples to be made, leaders to be formed, for passionate worship, to see the Holy Spirit move in people's lives. And so we continued to discuss the, this with the elders. And we felt for a long time as elders that we would really appreciate the support and the foundation of being linked to something bigger than ourselves, a denomination. And we've pressed certain doors, pushed certain doors that have not opened over the previous years to see if we could be connected to something bigger than ourselves. And so we discussed Elam. And when we learned about Elam, learned more about them, about their theology, about their vision, about their mission, uh, about what their focus and about all the strengths, we grew to love uh, what El all that Elam stand for. But some of you may be thinking right now, who is the Vine Church? The Vine Church started as a youth club in 1968 known as the Alpha Group, which grew into a house church. Jimmy and Elmer Dowds became pastors in 1982. Starting as long-haired hippies going on pilgrimages, their journey led to the establishment of a dynamic community known for its passionate worship, relationship with the Holy Spirit, and unwavering commitment to evangelism. Their faithfulness led them to acquire and renovate an industrial lemonade factory into a thriving center, reflecting their ethos of meeting both spiritual and practical needs. The Vine Church champions personal conversion, the empowering work of the Holy Spirit, and active engagement in the community. Transitioning leadership to Aaron and Lindsay Dowds in 2017, the church continues to be a blessing in the local community and in nations across the earth. The church values, worship, personal transformation through relationship with the Holy Spirit and reaching our community and world with good news. Hi guys, some of you won't know who Grace City Church is. We officially planted under Elam in 2014, which was a wonderful relationship to come into of covering and encouragement and accountability. And we enjoy as a church passionate worship, prayer meetings, discipling people, baptizing, whether it's in the sea or in a birthing pool in the car park. You know, we enjoy the journey of seeing people get to know God and make God known. And the church is known for its passionate worship powerful prayer meetings, ushering in the presence of God, and we highly value life groups. We make them a priority for us. Discipleship is a priority for us. Grace City Church is Pentecostal, and we value an experiential relationship with the Holy Spirit and expect to encounter Jesus when we pray and gather together for worship. 
Grace City Church has been praying for more than a decade for Dunfermline to become a city, to see revival and for a sovereign move of God. And we've already seen a town become a city. Now we're believing for the rest. Why join the churches together? I mean, both churches are doing well, seeing great things. Uh, we're seeing good worship services, seeing people come to know Jesus Christ, have small groups. So why join them together? Well, we believe there's yet a bumper harvest to be reached. Jesus said the harvest is ready. We believe there is a harvest under Fermlin that needs uh, workers and laborers to be brought together to reach and care for that harvest. And we believe by coming together, by bringing our boats together to work together for the harvest, we will be better together, stronger together, better equipped, uh, focusing on the mission and vision, the Great Commission to go and make disciples in Dunfermline, teaching them to obey everything that Jesus has commanded. We both came away pretty shocked and pretty humbled, didn't it's we? completely honoured. Yeah. Not just to be cooked to curry, but to obviously have such an incredible proposal put to us. Yeah. For us personally and for the two churches. Yeah, and, and even just even the attitude um, that Erin and Lindsay had, even just for the wider mission of Dunfermline in their heart. And uh, it really impacted us. We, we went away, we prayed about it, we, we talked to Elam about it, we got wise counsel, mm. and um, we, we came back and said, yes, we feel God is in this, and yes to all three uh, offers. Yes, we would love to bring the two churches together and, and join like a marriage, one congregation. Yes, um, Elam said we would love to have it under Elam. And thirdly, yes, myself and Hannah would love to be senior pastors of this new church. So we're really excited and we do believe the Lord is on this and it is an honor and an absolute privilege uh, to journey together with everyone involved. And we really hope you'll be just as excited as we are. We, we know that God is the God of the open door and I just love that with the two churches coming together in the way that they are, that it really is the opposite spirit coming for this city, one of unity, mm. one of stronger together. And um, it's not a light thing that we have just decided on. We have all individually and as eldership teams and with wise counsel, really sought the Lord for the good yeah. of the whole of both churches and for what he wants to do in this city. So it's really exciting. Erin's Aaron's, gonna just share a little bit now uh, about the benefits of the two churches coming together. The benefits of joining forces. You know, there are so many benefits, but the, I suppose the most important benefit that we have is that we're better equipped, more prepared, more able to fill the Great Commission, to fulfill the vision and mission that God has given us to reach our city with the good news of Jesus Christ, to see many more people accept Jesus, experience the abundant life that he offers, and to see our church, church packed each Sunday morning with passionate worshipers uh, who love God with all the heart, mind, soul, and strength. There are so many benefits of joining forces. You know, like any married couple coming together, two churches coming together, we bring together different strengths, different personalities, different spiritual gifts. Um, not only that, we um, will see our teams strengthened. Um, we'll have more volunteers uh, working in our teams. We'll uh, have different skills and more skills that are brought to the table. We'll be joining our incomes together to help us with our budgets and to better fulfill the vision and the mission financially. We'll have assets that we're joining um, and looking at joining as well, to, which, which helps financially to fulfill the vision that God has given us. There are so many benefits of joining forces. I've only listed a few. It's going to be really exciting. Joining together as one is going to make us so much stronger in so many areas, don't you reckon? Just finances, resources, manpower. Well, I think in the, the days that we're living now, we cannot have um, too many like-minded, spirit-filled mm. people around us in our life. Because as iron sharpens iron, so we sharpen one another. And um, I just know that if this is a God idea, it's a good idea. That these families, these two churches coming together, it's going to be a blessing. It's going to be a blessing. Yeah, and when we shared it originally with the elders and the, and the deacons and people from both churches and in leadership positions, they were really excited, weren't they, about 
um, just the way forwards and, and, and seeing people I, I almost, I don't know, released into what God's calling them to do on a bigger level. And we've got some video clips here of uh, the elders from the Vine and Grace City Church and even some Elam guys as well, uh, just sharing their thoughts um, about the joining of the churches. Hi there, I'm Sally. And I'm Alan. And um, we've been in the vine for 40 years. And we are very excited about the next 40 years of <laughs> Grace Church, City Church and the Vine Church come yes. together. And uh, yeah, can't wait for it all to begin. Great, bye. Hi, I'm Tim. And I'm Mel. And we've been at the Vine Church for almost 20 years now. And during that time, we've seen many amazing things and we've seen God's hand at work in the church and in the local community. We believe that this next chapter is going to be incredible and we are so excited about joining together with Grace Church and um, coming together to do great things for God in this city and this nation. We can't wait, can we? We can't wait. Looking forward to it. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm James Glass. I'm Elam's regional leader for Scotland and the northwest of England. I'm really excited of what's happening in, in Dunfermline at this time. Excited about the way that the Vine Church and Grace City Church are flowing together into a merger. Uh, great to see what God's doing. I've got to know Aaron and I've known Steve and Hannah for a long time. I'm so excited at the way that uh, they are walking together and pleased to be part of this journey. So um, I hope to get to meet you in person one day, um, but until then, God bless you and uh, look forward to seeing what God does in the next weeks and months. God bless you. Good morning, Grace Church and Vine Church. What a great day this is. God bringing two churches together in Dunfermline to be headed up with fantastic pastor Stephen and uh, Hannah Chalmers. And uh, I could not be more excited and, and uh, recommend them more. Elm and I, as the founding leaders of Divine Church, just want to endorse what's happening today and it, all the great things are heading our way. So I just want to encourage you guys to get into the joy of the Lord in this, see the giant grapes in the land and Ignore all the giants that uh, the enemy wants to put in the way of every move of God. So it's going to be great, guys. So Grace Church and Fine Church, we celebrate your bravery and faith in making this decision. God bless you, guys. It's time to celebrate like crazy. Amen. Hi. Well, it's good to be here celebrating with you um, on this Sunday. David and, and myself, Pauline, we were co-founders of Grace Church 10 years ago and it's been an amazing journey and we've really enjoyed all seeing what God's done. But we're more excited now for what he's about to do because God said the best is yet to come and that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. So we're excited with you and uh, we look forward to, to, to meeting you all in the future. We just want to take this opportunity to say a massive thank you to the elders and leadership teams of, of both churches who've both been really encouraging, really enthusiastic uh, when we've shared uh, the plans. And I was actually a little bit nervous about telling Colin, our assistant pastor, and I thought, well, how am I going to tell him this? And I sat him down in the church and I, I told him what, what had been proposed. And he pulls out his iPhone and Colin hears from the Lord and he writes what God says in his phone and his notes. And he just opens his iPhone, goes to notes and he just slides it across the table to me. And he says, this is what God told me this morning. And it just says, we're joining with another church. Mm. And I was like, thank you, Jesus, that you are in this. And amazing that Colin um, was you know, willing and uh, able to hear from the Lord and to get behind it. And so we've had so many confirmations that God's in this. Mm. And I just want to say thank you to the elders and leaders for their amazing attitude towards this. And I, I pray and hope that as congregational members, you'll be the same too. Hi everyone. By now you'll have heard the, the good news, the exciting news that Grace City Church uh, is going to be joining forces with the Vine Church in Dunfermline. A little while ago, Steve texted me and he said, um, we need to meet for a coffee. I've got some really exciting news to share. And not long before that, I'd, I'd clearly heard the Lord saying church merger. 
And I thought, wow, <laughs> we're, we're going to be joining forces with another church. So I didn't have my little black book with me, so I just took my phone out, opened my notes, and I just typed two words, church merger. And when I met up with Steve, and Steve started telling me the news, I didn't say a word, I just went into my pocket, took my phone out, opened my notes, and just slid it across the table to him. You know, isn't it wonderful the, how the Lord gives confirmation of things? Um, and for me, I had a number of words that I couldn't quite work out what they meant. Uh, I'd had a couple of dreams as well. And I know I wasn't the only one that was, that was getting words and, and having dreams about this. But for me to hear that news from Steve, all the other words and the dreams all made sense and brought them all together. So it's just amazing. It's incredible how the, how, how the Lord gives confirmation of these things. And you know, the Lord isn't bringing two churches together to move less. He's bringing these two churches together so they can move more. So it's really exciting and, and I hope you're excited as well. Um, and I just can't wait to be truthful. I just can't wait to get on with it now and get together and just be part of this, um, this move of God in Dunfermline. So you might be thinking, well, what are our next steps? Well, we're going to hold a special joint worship night on June the 9th uh, at 6.30. We're going to meet at the Vine, half an hour, teas and coffees, get to know each other, get to say hello at the start. And then from seven o'clock uh, till half eight, we're going to have worship and prayer. And we're just going to just give it to the Lord, have an amazing time of just coming together and just praising Jesus and lifting the roof. And um, we really expect God to show up and... Um, this will be held at the Vine Church, June the 9th, 6.30 uh, for teas and coffees, 7 o'clock for prayer and worship. So the first meeting will be an opportunity to meet the new pastor, Steve and Hannah Chammers. It'll be an opportunity to get more information. It'll be an opportunity to ask questions and to hear the answers. You know, if there's a burning question that you have or is something that's causing you a little bit of angst, please do get in touch with your pastors, Stephen, Hannah, or Colin, or myself, or Lindsay, or um, you've got Tim or Mel, Alan or Sally. We'd be more than happy for you to ask questions and be able to provide answers. We have made a frequently asked questions book, which I'll be looking for the answers myself as well, that, that will be available to everyone. And if your question isn't in there, then do see one of us or write it down. We may not have all the answers because this is a, an organic but, but good uh, journey that we're going on. And the next couple of months, we will be doing a soft start. We will be coming together for, for prayer times, for worship times as churches to look forward to a proper merge in September. Yeah, that's great. And, and you're right, Hannah, we don't have all the answers right now for a lot of the questions. We're still working out stuff around property and different things. Um, but feel free to ask us. We might say we don't know yet or we're working on it. And um, I'm really excited about these joint worship nights and, and prayer times Hannah's on about there. We're going to do our first joint worship service on an evening at the Vine Church at 6.30 on June the 9th. We're going to have half an hour teas and coffees in their cafe. And then from 7 to 8.30, we're just going to worship and pray. We're just going to lift the roof. We're just going to invite the Holy Spirit to just come and bless it as we just as we praise Jesus together. And I'm really excited about that. And as Hannah says, uh, from there onwards, we'll just build relationships um, up till September. Once a month, we'll be gathering uh, for joint worship services and prayer services. And um, hopefully after the end of the summer, start praying together midweek. And then um, the first weeks of September, we will have our first new congregational service. And it's gonna be amazing. So most importantly, please pray, please seek the Lord. We need as much prayer as possible, but also pray about your part in this. You know, you're part of this church. God's got a plan for you to see a move of God, to win souls, see people discipled. And so go away and pray and just say, Lord, what can I give? What can I bring to this? And, um, and we're praying for you as well. We know this isn't going to be easy to take all in in one go. And we do pray that you'll understand that you'll hear the heart of the Lord in this. And um, thank you so much for your time and, and listening to our, our video this morning. Mm. And thank you so much for being gracious in the changes because 
Um, I know that change can be uncomfortable and we have to make room in our lives for it. But I know that I know that God has a plan for you and he has plans for us as churches and now to come together as one church. That is good, that is to prosper us, that isn't to harm us and to give us all a future and a hope. Yeah, amen. Amen. Okay. Lindsay, come up and join me, please. Just uh, w welcome Lindsay to the stage. The reason Lindsay wasn't more on the video is we had one uh, day to try and film and Lindsay was working, I was in pharmacy and so we just could not make logistics work of margin film to film together. But um, yeah, if we could just put slide um, seven up please, Clara. We believe um, these verses that God gave us to them as a prophetic word um, over what he is doing and it says, Deuteronomy 8, seven to 10, for the Lord your God is bringing First and foremost, we acknowledge where this comes from, who's in control. We make our plans and God directs our steps. We don't believe this is a human endeavor, but a divine orchestration. It says the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. Even if we just stop there, guys, the future is good. It's a future. It's bright. It's hope. His plans are not to harm us. So even if we just settled on that, his plans is to bring us into a good land. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear a loud amen? Can I hear an African church amen? Come on! Preach it, brother! Um, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of olive trees and honey. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity. I believe God is saying that the days of scarcity are over. In which you will lack nothing the days of lack are coming to an end a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills amen hills i'm there uh, you can dig copper and you shall eat and be full and you shall bless the lord your god for the good land he has given you i'm just going to ask lindsay to read this one um lindsay sent me a teaching on this psalm 133 verses one to three this one here lindsay would you read that uh, this one um sure how good and pleasant it is when god's people live together in unity it is like precious oil poured i thought you were going to put it on your head <laughs> I was like, oh, don't you dare. <laughs> on your head, it says. <laughs> Running down on Aaron's beard. <laughs> and on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. That's a really significant psalm for us. And um, Lindsay sent a teaching by David Pawson, and I listened to it in, on a commute. Thursday, the 29th of February, 2024. The whole time I listened to it, I was driving through the largest, brightest double rainbow you can imagine from the commute from Dunfermline to Perth. And um, we're gonna get our team up just now and just say a few things, but this was his teaching. He says, he saw in the faces of the crowd, it's talking about unity, how good, how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. He says, he saw the crowd going up to the temple and he said, it's like the Jew it's like the dew that makes a barren, hard ground green, soft, fruitful, and fertile. And as he looked at the harmony among the people of God, he said first that makes them a sweet smell to God and enables them to go into God. And second, it's like dew that makes them fruitful. This is what we're believing for. And fertile instead of hard and cold and rocky. Harmony does it. Harmony does both things. I think I've explained both pictures to you of oil and water. It says, for there the Lord bestows his blessing. Amen. Now, I'm just going to ask Lindsay because her brother um, uh, brought a prophetic message to us. Um, and uh, could you just share about the, the bridge? We've actually got the recording so, uh, of your brother, but uh, could you just tell us a little bit about the bridge um, vision that your brother brought, please, Lindsay? Do you want to play it? It's up to you. You can play it. Right. 
you say it first and then we can play at the end. <laughs> um, well, a bit of context as well. A number of years back, God writes beautiful stories into all our lives and speaks um, with kindness and encouragement into all our lives. And a while ago, a good number of years back, maybe 15 years, maybe more back, we were through at another church in Dundee and there was a prophetic lady there and she spoke over a number of families and she asked us to stand up as a family and she spoke over us, she spoke lots of encouragement, great things, never wrote it down, got a recording somewhere, somehow, but one thing I remember about that day is she called, um, you know, and it was a bridge builder and I always remember really taking that to heart and I've seen that play out consistently in just our heart and journey with God that um, how just the gifting upon uh, Aaron's life and building and connecting people together Um, and recently in this kind of transition time for us as leaders um, you know we were seeking God for the best thing to do and we believe the promise he works all things together for good um, and sometimes it's the in-between stage of the, the coming together. So we're waiting on the, the good kind of meeting up um, for that hope uh, kind of filled future. Um, and it's that in-between stage where you, you're really pressing into God. And somebody uh, had a vision for us of um, uh, a couple who'd set out to build a bridge in that kind of ministry in God and they were faithful in to see it to the other side um, even though they might it might not go the full, full distance but it was pleasing to God's heart as such and that there was an encouragement because God was bringing a bridge that was further upstream and was going to bring it together and between the two they will build stronger and reach further and um, in that and it was just a beautiful confirmation of stepping out and following where you feel God's leading you because sometimes when God takes you on a journey of faith clarity comes as you move towards where he's leading you um, and and that's where it's kind of been for us on the journey it's exciting but sometimes we have to press in and have faith when we don't necessarily um, have immediate clarity it's moving forward it's like what Aaron was saying it's action, not speculation, not overthinking, but just moving towards where you feel God's leading. And that's, yeah, that's where. That's where. I think you should speak a lot more. Uh, that, that is fantastic. It reminds me, someone once told me that um, God guides us with a compass, not a map. Uh, we prefer the map. We prefer to know exactly what does the future look like, exactly where am I going, exactly once you take us through the Red Sea, where do we go next, God? How many days? How long is it going to take? How long is this journey going to take? But God just gives us a compass, and so we're, uh, that, that is a walk, and it's a journey of faith. We actually have the recording. That your, I asked your brother back in February to record this message. It'd be great to hear your brother's voice. He's maybe joining us on his living room with a really good coffee. He makes the best coffee. Craig, I'm coming up for a, a coffee soon. Get that brew on. Um, but I'd love to hear his voice. If you're able to, Clara, just play that recording. and I'd love you to hear his voice from February this year. It was that you, there was a couple building a bridge, or walking across a bridge rather, that they knew wasn't going to go all the way across. It was partly broken. And um, I, I, didn't, I don't believe that it represents a broken church. I'm not explaining this very well. <laughs> anyway, I saw, what, what this person said was they saw two people committed to walk across a bridge that they knew wasn't necessarily going to get to the other side. And it was something of a fragrance and a great aroma to God in their faith and um, what they didn't see was that God was bringing another part of a bridge from further up the stream to connect with the bridge that you had committed to walk on even though you couldn't see that God was bringing the bridge and, and a different part of the bridge to connect which which was obviously connecting with the vision around um, uh, Sharon Stone's word about Aaron being a bridge builder so I have a real sense of hope that God is going to build 
forwards. I mean, the Bible says that an increase of his kingdom and his government, there will be no end. And the Vine Church is part of that very definitely. And what you've done and what you continue to do, I believe, is a real aroma and worship to God. And he has got a great plan for you as you move forwards, even in this transition season. So, yeah, that was a vision. Also, amen, amen. So, yeah, Lindsay, just a few more words, how you're feeling about this, and um, any, any words you would like to share with the church about what, what is happening. Yeah, I just want to encourage everybody that um, God always sets us with promises, and he invites us to put our trust in him, and he leads us faithfully. He's our good shepherd. Um, so this might be a bit of a surprise for you, but let me tell you, when God takes you on an adventure, it's it's a great adventure. It's full of hope. And I hope you've kind of captured some of the hope that's weaved through what Steve and Hannah were sharing. Um, they are a beautiful, amazing couple. And we really do love serving in this church. And we are committed to serving going forward in this church as well. It's not that we are disappearing from here, but we really feel that the time is for new leaders to come in and really um, take the journey forward, build strength in, and we're, we're committed to love and serving God, however that looks. Join the welcome team, wherever we, you know, we can serve, we love to um, build God's church, because whether it's a doorkeeper or whatever it is, it's God's church, and we are all in this together. Amen? And he brings things together for good. And we, we really do feel honored and, and blessed to serve God and how he's led us as a family over the last seven years and leading together. And we really do see God's hand in this dynamic shift. Um, and you remember Mel spoke at the start of the year with a beautiful word on radical shift. Um, and you really got to kind of listen to what the Spirit's saying. It says three times in Revelation, let him who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Um, Alan's great word of Simeon, just seeing the fulfillment of God doing something healing in our land when he brought that beautiful word um, just as we were coming into the year, radical shift. God's hand of faithfulness in guiding us, he invites us on an adventure and God spoke to me um, earlier in the year as well on just, I saw a really faint rainbow um, and I was stepping out, doing, uh, moving into something new and I just felt God saying, clarity will come, just trust me. Um, and I just want to encourage you that for you, you might feel a little bit uncertain, but this is a hope-filled journey that we're uh, on right now. And I just want to encourage you, clarity will come jump into what God's doing. It's an amazing journey. Amazing. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, just to be clear, what is happening to Lindsay and I? Uh, well, we are laying down our role of senior pastors and our employment. We're currently employed one day, uh, and God has blessed me with pharmacy work, John, and uh, that's how I got to meet you, brother. And um, we're going to lay that down, and uh, Steve and Hannah, the new pastors, are going to have the opportunity to choose their elders, um, and we're asking them to choose elders from both churches. So a selection of elders from both churches. And we said to them that we would be happy to continue to serve as elders if we're wanted. And we wanted to make that very clear. You're under no obligation or pressure to choose us um, or take us. But we have prayed and believed that if you want us to serve in your team, then we will continue to do so. And they um, have expressed to us that they would like us to stand with them and support them as elders. So we're going nowhere. Um, the offer to the Bahamas was there, but we um, turned it down. And, uh, you know, there was a church in the Bahamas that had my name all over it. Someone beat me to it. Roland, baby. You got there first row, baby. Yeah, we'll go. That, yeah, okay, Andrew. Thank you, brother. Andrew's going to treat us to a holiday in the Bahamas anyway. He said, thank you, Andrew. That's very kind. Very kind, brother. Um, so, yes. Welcome, Alan, Sally, um, Tim and Mel, and my mum and dad to the stage as a founding pastors. Come on, come and take some seats. Um, 
And I'm just going to ask them all to share a few words to you, what's on their heart, how they feel, and um, just any, any words that, <laughs> that they want to bring. So yeah, we'll just move along the row. So it starts with you, Alan, over to you. Amazing, isn't this wonderful? I'm so excited, what a brilliant video. Uh, so good, and I hope this is resonating and making sense to uh, as many as it can. And uh, as Lindsay's been beautifully saying, clarity will come. I'm believing for that. I just wanted to pick up on that Simeon verse um, that I shared about at the beginning. It's in um, uh, Luke 2 and the story of Simeon who's waiting and comes into the temple and meets Mary and Joseph with the baby Jesus. It's just a beautiful, beautiful moment. And um, just that hope that what's coming for us is Jesus, is a Holy Spirit revival is coming here. And the way Simeon reacted is how I want to react. And it just says, moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. And that's what I, I, I just want to be like that. I want to embrace Jesus. I want to just take hold of the Holy Spirit in my arms and my heart. And then I'm believing that that is what's coming here. So, yeah. Amen. No. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm just in awe. And, you know, we've gone along this journey for a wee while with Lindsay Nairn, who have basically walked with such grace through all these months and I just want to honour um, Lindsay Neer and Fern, thank you for being part of this journey um, and that was beautifully presented Erin and Lindsay. It, I'm just honoured to be a part of this journey and I just love the thought of being stronger together, you know, better together, all these um, words and it's like, sorry, I'm so simple, it's like a I love cake and I love icing, but this is like putting them both together. And I really believe, you know, we're going to taste and see that the Lord is good. So, so excited for this new journey. Beautiful. Oh, wow. I, every time I hear um, the story, we've heard it so many times, but each time I get goosebumps. And I just really feel this is such a monumentous time, you know, such a beautiful moment in history. And thinking back to the journey of this church, and it really just oh, gives me goosebumps to think how God's led his people, all of you, and this, this is very important that you're here today and that you're hearing this today and you're part of this. How beautiful is that, that you're on this journey and think about how God brought his people through so much and each time um, he did something miraculous that they'd never even imagined or thought. And I just think this moment is one of those moments where you know, we can look back and think, God, wow, how did you do that? How did you do it? And you do it time and time again. Um, and, you know, we, we're just thrilled. Um, we've lived and breathed this, and we get that some of this may be a wee bit of a shock for some of you, but it's just um, a miracle, really, how this has happened. And just all the people here, Jimmy, Elma, we just want to honor you as well, because you know, the foundation of what is here has never left. And it's a special, special place that God has, um, yeah, he's rescued us so many times, just like the Israelites in the wilderness. And all those times God has stepped in. He said, you're special. And I want you to do a great thing. And we really believe that, that this moment that um, is happening now, you know, the two churches coming together, to do great things in Dunfermline, not just Dunfermline, but the nation of Scotland, um, and just to be part of that. What a special, special time. So, yeah, we're just thrilled and um, honoured, and just want to thank Karen and Lindsay as well, um, who, as Sally said, have just been so graceful through it all, um, and it's been a bumpy road for them particularly, um, but we thank them for their in patience and kindness and leadership as well um, through it all. Bless you. 
Yeah, I just want to say it's an amazing time. And um, if you look over how the church started all those years ago, you can it's easy to look in hindsight and see how God's been working all these, that weaving all the different threads through it. And as you've probably seen from the video there already, God's been doing that in the last 10 years with people in the Vine Church and Stephen Hannah, and we're fully believing that that's just the start of it. So 40 years ago, Jimmy and Elma and the team started it. This is now, and now the next season, and we're really excited for it. Thanks, Tim. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, very excited. I really am excited. And a uh, brand new day is dawning. And I'm just really excited. For that, um, and I just pray with thanks for Aaron and Lindsay for all the hard work you've put in over the last seven years. I didn't realize it was seven years. Um, because um, God's seen every one of your smiles and every one of your tears and it's been a hard road sometimes for you but you're going to be released into what God wants you to do now and Aaron I think it's just amazing that, that John came this morning because the love that you have for people that have addictions and that you're going to be able to have a clearer head to be able to use your head for that, but be used in the church mightily as well. So I'm really proud of you. So I'm a proud, proud mum of my son and daughter-in-law. So I am. And the, I think the word that you shared this morning, I wrote it down because I forget things very easily, about Lynn. Um, I just thought that was amazing. I just thought that that is what we are all about. That's what we love, the Holy Spirit, to move, to move mightily. And that, those words, it was a heavy, uncontrolled outpouring. That's what I look, look forward to because I know that that's going to happen. And um, this, the words that we sung this morning, it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. And so, you know, whatever we lay down, God's going to, with the right spirit, the word he said to me, it's not about our abilities, but it's about our character, how we handle this. There'll be lots and lots of questions. There was for me, and I still don't even know half of it, to be honest. I don't know the answers either, but I just know the Holy Spirit's going to lead, going to guide, and the outpouring of his spirit is going to be mighty, and we're going to see souls saved, because I believe that this is God, God's move of the spirit. So I'm absolutely delighted. Elma, I love you so much. What's this for? You're still so drop-dead gorgeous. I, I just want to give you an eight-second kiss right. Oh, sorry, I forgot where I was, guys. I forgot. Can we just stand for a moment, guys? I, I'm sorry, I just can't sit down and talk at the same time. A man can only do one thing, and you'll be getting stiff like me. And I'm just far too excited to sit down and talk. This is the most prophetic moment in the Vine Church history. I salute every one of these leaders that have led us through the most seven most difficult years, world confusion, wars, rumors of wars, all kinds of stuff and pandemics. And I just want you to applaud them for leading us through the Red Sea to this moment. Applaud them. Aaron, I know I'm not doing what I was told, I know, but I never have done, so I'm not going to start now. But guys, this is the last time I'm going to say this on this platform. Your tea's out. Your tea is out. And the reason being, God always tests the waters in people's hearts before he comes. And he sent a wee African man last week he sent the spies in the land, not to test the promised land, to test the waters in their heart. And he sent a wee African man last week to test you tea bags, to test you guys to see if you were ready for heaven's tea. If you were ready for heaven's tea. And that's why I'm not saying it again, because from now on in this church, it's only going to be heaven's tea, heaven's new wine, heaven's new oil, heaven's new glory, heaven's new presence, heaven new, heaven's new joy. And when I watched the video, you humbled yourselves, guys, and you passed the test. You made room. You threw away the clock. You threw away the time. You threw away the gender skit, and you made room 
And the Lord promised me on Wednesday morning at 2 o'clock, if you guys make room, he will come. And he's saying, so come, you who are hungry. And come, you are thirsty. And I know Hannah said, because they're young pastors, there's a load of frequent questions. Do you know what, guys? Every time I come with a hundred questions, the Lord puts me in my place. He says, what about my question? There's only one question. Just park all your questions. Park all your questions. There's only one question you should be asking yourself, Jimmy. What does the Lord require of thee in this season? Let's applaud the Lord, guys. Come on. What does the Lord... Don't weary that we lassie with hundreds of questions. If you've got an honest, a really genuine question, like, can I still keep my seat? That's all right. But see, mo- take your questions to the Lord. Take your moment to the Lord, because I could not be more excited. I could not be more excited. We're going... I could not be more excited because you guys sowed into Uganda like we did many years ago with a Ugandan choir, and God brought back what you sowed in there. Make space for the African joy, you bunch of deadly tea bags, because we're stepping into a whole new realm. He promised me before all this that by this Christmas, this place would be bouncing with his glory, his presence, and his joy. Get ready, guys. Get ready. I warn you, get ready. Just part your questions. Dive into his question, because his glory is on its way. His presence is on its way. His unexpected miracles and resources. And this Christmas, this place is going to be bouncing full more than it's ever done its whole life. Is that okay, guys? I've gone off track. I've gone off track, but I've never managed to stay on track in my life. Thank you so much, Vine Church, because none of this would be happen if Elma and I didn't have 45 years and these guys' support of every one of you saints, of every single thing you've done. So see when you have your tea today. Even if you didn't drink, just put some wine in it. God bless you and have a great week. Thanks, guys. Amen. Let's take our seats for a minute. Thank you so much, everybody, for what you shared. Time is pressing on. Can I get the band back up, please? Thank you, Dad. I love that. You've got a question. What does the Lord require of me? I love that. Um, But we do have an FAQ, which is frequently asked questions. We've got lovely brochures. In a minute, I'm going to ask us all on the stage to come and distribute them. And so probably the answers to most of your questions will be in there. And there will, be, there will be others, of course. And um, that's why we're inviting you next Sunday, 6.30 p.m., we're going to have our first joint worship and prayer service. Uh, we'll talk through a little bit more of frequently asked questions, and there will be opportunity um, to present questions. And also, any particular ones, just put them into mail at thevinechurch.net, and that gives us opportunity to um, uh, look at them for next Sunday. Plus, we're going to be hanging out in the cafe, all this team here. So, um, yes, that's the the next one is uh, the 9th of June. And um, I'm just checking if there's anything else I really needed to say. I don't think so, Alan. No. <laughs> yes, okay, that, that's, that's, yeah, do you want to say that? So I said it, didn't I? Sorry. Just a reminder, I, uh, the, the first time we're going to be meeting jointly on a Sunday morning is the first Sunday in September, if that didn't come across enough in the video. That's it. Yeah, no, that's absolutely great. I mean, a lot of things are clear in our heads, um, but not necessarily to you guys. But as I said, hopefully this FAQ brochure, could you, I maybe just ask two people just to go and get the boxes and we'll, we'll take a bundle each. My dad's got something to share and then uh, we're going to hand out these FAQs and we're going to worship. Last thing, guys, the prophetic juices are flowing like crazy. I don't know if he knows this, maybe he did, but he was so prophetic today. I love that thing about the man called Lynn. I love the cascading. Let me share how I see it so prophetic. And God is speaking loud and clear. Some of you may know the name Dunfermline City is split. We are told what it actually means is, it means... Dunfern, Lynn, spelt different. It actually means a city built on seven hills with a Lynn 
a burn or a stream running through it. That's exactly how Dunfermline is right now. How many people already knew that? Some of you, thank goodness, because I was beginning to think I had a bad dream last night. Can you believe that? And Elma and I started a christening journey in a house church called Lynn Burn Road. The Lynn, the, the Cascade, rivers are coming. The rivers are coming in, hopefully not to cow and beef, you know, and flood your house again. But, 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 but not only is the Lynn coming, the burning fire of God is coming. The burning fire. God bless you guys. Thanks for your patience and time. Wonderful. No, I didn't. Well, I, I, uh, I think it's a distant memory, but that, that is wonderful. Can we stand to our feet? Thank you so much, Dad. Thank you for everybody. Thank you for those who joined online. You've got these nice, glossy brochures. There's a QR code. You can turn on your camera, scan the QR code, and the video is on there. There's a link to Elam. We'll talk more about Elam. We've not really mentioned much about that. I'm excited to tell you more about Elam and the, the relationship that we're going to develop there going to bring so much benefits being connected uh, you know more so today than ever we're vulnerable being an independent and on our own but being connected to something bigger than ourselves is going to bring huge opportunities and strength father God we love you let's just close our eyes father we love you we thank you that we make our plans and you direct our steps we thank you Lord that you direct the flow of the rivers of the hearts of kings that even our hearts lord are controlled by you for you're a good and gracious and loving god you love this city you love this nation you love the lost and you god are bringing the rivers together you have caused and changed the direction of the rivers that they may flow into one in order that they may flow out of the temple to the east to the lowest place where the lost the least and the last are found that the good news and the spirit of god may flow into this temple and out of this new temple that you're creating in these last days you're creating a new temple lord that is full of your spirit and we thank you for the outpouring god lord we've seen outpourings in toronto we've seen outpourings lord in our past and we're believing for a fresh outpouring of your love your holy spirit we're believing for hearts to be set on fire we're believing that hope that what that you once had that has died is going to be rekindled dreams that you once had that have been lost are going to be restored we're believing that god is going to do great things so we love you lord we bless you lord we put our hands together and we celebrate what you're doing come on come on let's celebrate what god is doing